This video will discuss configuring uh, multiple IDS GIGI cameras from all sports systems. It's important to note that each camera should be plugged into its own private GIGI network port in your computer. Uh, do not run these cameras through powered switches or networking hubs as a single camera can saturate the entire bandwidth of one GIGI channel. So each camera should be plugged into its own private network adapter uh, uh, configured inside your computer. Now just to show you that um, I'll open up the device manager for this computer and you can see that we have installed in it a, um, a four port GIGI card. These uh, four channels here are all on one uh, PCI card inside the computer. Uh, there are are also USB 3.0 adapters which you can plug in which will give you one GIGI port each so if you're using a, uh, a laptop that has USB 3.0 ports you can still do multiple GIGI cameras uh, just going through a USB 3.0 to GIGI adapter so as to get the multiple controllers. Now configuring the um, network uh, adapters is also an important step You'll do that through the Network and Sharing Center of Windows. Uh, locate the adapter settings where you'll now see an icon for each network uh, chip in the computer system. Now we've already configured these uh, camera or these gig e ports as CamNet 5, 6, 7, and 8. We'll just look through these to see what we've done. We'll start with CamNet 5, which essentially is the first GIGI port on the back of the card. I'll double click that to open up its uh, property dialog. And here on the properties panel, you can see a few things. First of all, we've disabled or unchecked all of the optional uh, network protocols that we really don't need running on top of this these ports. So since these are only going to be used for cameras, uh, we recommend that you close off or disable everything except the gigabit Ethernet UI service and TCP IP v6 and v4 down here. Now in the uh, Internet Protocol version 4, if you double click on that, you'll see the properties where you can set the IP address for the adapter chip in the computer. This is for the GIGI port itself. You must set a manually configured port here, or IP address I should say. We recommend starting with 192.168.5.1 for your first uh, adapter and then 192.168.6.1 dot uh, seven dot one and so forth for the additional ones later on you'll see that we are also going to program the cameras with a matching IP address 192.168.5.100 is what we would use for camera number one and so on through the rest of the cameras one other important option that you'll want to configure if you can not all adapters offer this but under the configure button you'll see additional properties in the Advanced tab. Specifically, you want to find whether or not your network adapter supports jumbo frames. By default, this will be disabled. And if it does support jumbo frames, set it to 4KB or something close to that. They might, they might not say 4KB on your particular uh, adapter. So just pick whatever number you can get higher than 2, really, is what you're after something higher than 2K. So we also named our network ports. So CamNet 5 is a clue to us that this particular network port is the 192.168.5.1 network. And then, you know, 6.1, 7.1, and 8.1. Just to show you here, if we open CamNet 6 and view his properties, you'll see that under his TCP IP4, he's configured for 192.168.6.1. So you should do that for each of your adapters that are going to be directly connected to your Gig E cameras. Now having done that, you would then turn to the IDS Camera Manager software, which is installed along with the device drivers for these cameras. This will list each of the cameras that is discovered on the system and uh, this is a completely configured system so the settings all look 
you know, there's no icons indicating that there is an error or a problem. Uh, when you first set up your system, you will probably have some exclamation points and indicators that the camera is not yet correctly configured. The first thing you'll want to do is make sure that each camera has a unique camera ID assigned to it. The camera ID is going to default to all being number one for all of your new cameras. So if it hasn't already been configured for you by us, you will, you will need to set those to a unique value. You do that here under the camera information button. So select the camera, click camera information, uh, wait for the dialog to appear, <clears throat> and then you can set the camera ID for the particular camera in question. You just plug in your new number right here and then hit OK. Make sure that all of those are unique, one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. Uh, they do not have to match the device ID or anything like that. They just need to be unique per camera. Now, you can also manually configure the IP address of your cameras. You do that here with the manual ETH configuration button. And as you can see, we have programmed a persistent IP address for the first camera at 192.168.5. Dot 100. This matches up with the port address we gave to the computer port 192.168.5.1. So therefore this camera must always be plugged into port 1 on our adapter card since it has the matching IP address settings. If you plug the camera into another port that has a different network assignment on it, it simply will not work and you'll see that the cameras show errors here on the IDS camera manager. So if we look through all of these you'll see that they've each been assigned to a matching network number. You can also see on the right hand side that uh, this is in expert mode by the way. Expert mode shows us additional panel. Uh, if you look through here you will find the IP address of the network that this particular camera is plugged into. So here is the network chip address which we set previously and up here is the camera's IP address. You just want to make sure that they match the first three segments 192.168.whatever is assigned for each network. Okay. Now the other uh, step that you'll want to do is under additional functions this is a global setting for all of your cameras. You will want to disable CPU idle states. Just disable all of those two at the t or both of those two at the top. Leave this uh, allow thread to optimize image acquisition performance. Leave that checked. And also make sure that parameter set is checked here. This indicates, this setting indicates that when the camera is first opened by our Motion View software, that it should load its default settings, not from the factory defaults, but from the defaults that we or you may have programmed into the camera's parameter set. This allows you to control the behavior of the camera without having to reprogram all of its settings every time you open it. So make sure your additional functions panel looks like this. That's all it takes to configure your cameras. You should then be able to open them in Motion View and work with each. You can also open individual cameras by double clicking on uh, the camera icon itself. This will bring you to the UI cockpit mode. We'll choose No Profile, which simply means load your settings from the camera's parameter sets. And in a, in a moment, you'll actually see the video camera uh, start to present live video it's doing, as it's doing here right now. So here's me waving into the camera lens. Okay, so these are the settings that you can go through for configuring your network adapters and your camera's IP addresses for the IDS Gig E cameras.